Hi, it's Dr. Fox. And a lot of individuals that have BPD or BPD traits experience anxiety. And there's a lot of things that people do that make their anxiety worse. So in this brief video, I wanna talk about those things so you're aware of them and that you can make better choices for yourself. So let's get into it. Like, share, and subscribe, comment, and let's get into it. Okay, so the first one is skipping meals. And actually, this can be really problematic, is that when we skip meals, what happens is we don't have the energy to utilize and push back against those old habits, those maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns. And it, those, the volume, right, that family in the head that I talk about in other videos, that volume just gets turned up and it gets louder and louder because you don't have the energy. Food is energy. It can be really, really problematic. So we don't want to skip meals. I understand that people, you know, have their own different lifestyles and, and eating and things like that, but it's important. Don't skip those meals because you're going to lose that energy to push back. And that family in the head is going to take advantage of it and amplify the noise in your head. Now eating processed foods. I know that this can be really tough because it's easy. It's everywhere, particularly here in the U S and in the UK and a lot of different parts of the UK, things like that in Canada, is that there's processed foods everywhere. And what happens is if we eat those processed foods, again, it takes more energy to digest and things like that. And it actually makes your anxiety worse because garbage in, garbage out. And we don't have that healthy energy in order to push back and manage, family in the head, that internal speak. Now, alcohol. Alcohol. Well, alcohol can be really tricky and we have to, we have to manage consumption, right? Everything in moderation. This can be really tricky. Of course, when you drink too much, then what happens? It's those defenses go down. Now, if you drink too, too much, I don't know, defenses all kind of wash away, right? And it depends on what type of inebriated person you are. Sometimes what happens is if you're really inebriated and then, you know, all of those protective layers are gone and you become really outspoken, but also maybe, and my clients have, have described this to me that instead of, of going outward, that sense of hatred and rage, it goes inward and that anxiety amplifies inside you and the discomfort gets amplified inside you. And then talk about the next day after the following day, a lot of individuals really tired, they're dragging, and it's really hard again to manage that family in the head. Your family in the head is a lot like a super spy. And that super spy, what it does, it knows to wait. And it's really patient. It waits. Maybe it doesn't have to wait long for you, right? Because it waits a different amount of time for everybody. But it's that super spy. And it's like, oh, I'm going to wait. Because you're going to skip a meal. You're going to be low energy. You're going to eat a bunch of junk. And then you're going to be tired. And you're going to feel all, right, all bloated or whatever. Then I'm going to get you. And then you're going to drink too much. Then I'm going to get you. And the way it gets you is start saying those things, all those old core beliefs, behaviors, and it starts to drive those behaviors, right? Then it all becomes just so intensive. And when you're inebriated, when you're drunk, it's harder to control your behavior, right? Because it's at a greater likelihood that you're going to react. Now, not drinking enough water is another factor, believe it or not, is that staying hydrated can help you. Now, I'm going to do a little self-disclosure and I don't do a lot of it, is that sometimes I'll get a little agitated. Sometimes throughout the day, agitated, I'll be like, hmm, I wonder if I'm dehydrated. There's actually a lot of studies that show when individuals are dehydrated, they have a lower frustration tolerance. That lower frustration tolerance leaves you open to more anxiety, greater concern, and then you have less energy to manage the anxiety. It takes energy to manage anxiety. Absolutely. Social media is another. All of us are on social media different times of the day, stuff like that. And I was just on social media looking for a good topic to cover in this short video. So when we're checking social media, however, pay attention to that dopamine in your brain a little bit. How do you do that? I notice that when I'm kind of scrolling through that there's a little thing in my head, I just kind of get tired. I'm like, oh God, I'm just kind of tired of seeing all that stuff. And that's when I put the phone down. I also have moments I'll put the phone down away from me as well. And also don't internalize that social media. You don't empower that family in the head, that internal voice that tells you, oh, 
Look how great her life is. Look how, look how he's doing. You know, you're not doing this. You don't even have this, that, this, that. You don't even have anything that great to show on social media. Nobody would look anyway. All of those are bases for anxiety and be careful. So when you interpret social media, I want you to remember it's only 20% of someone's life. No one's life is perfect. I don't care what it looks like on social media. Nobody's life is perfect. Next, right? Not moving your body, staying stationary for too long, particularly, and I see this a lot with individuals along the BPD spectrum, that it's hard for them to sit at a desk or when working from home during the COVID thing, remember that thing? And everybody was kind of home and they would get restless and they're not moving. And then there's this energy buildup. Well, family in the head, we're back to that, is going to use that energy and like, oh, we got a little surplus here. Let's have at it. Remember, it's that spy. And that spy is like, oh, we got a surplus. Let's use it and make you feel terrible about yourself so you can feel small and I'll feel powerful. That's anxiety talk. Not getting enough sleep. Man, oh man. We live in a world of sleep deprivation. Absolutely. Try to go to sleep on time. Try not to look at social media. Try not to look at the news. Try to watch something funny if you're going to watch it before. The best thing to do is to read a book. I know we're not big on reading books anymore, but reading a book before you go to bed can really help your brain calm down and help you sleep better. Also, make sure that you're not giving up sleep. If you're tired in the middle of the day, you're probably not sleeping long enough. Be careful because naps can also disrupt your sleep schedule. If you're a big napper and you have trouble going to bed at night or you don't make it through the night, that could be because your sleep schedule is off. Now, you may want to do a sleep study if you can. You can look at a university that might be near you. They may have a sleep lab that you could participate in a study. Sleep studies are typically very expensive. But not getting enough sleep, absolutely. Again, we go back to energy. We go back to the ability to manage that anxiety and that family in the head. Sleep is critical. And we are a sleep-deprived world, absolutely. And Googling symptoms. Dr. Google. Whew, man. Dr. Google's a big problem. Dr. Google is a huge problem, particularly for me, because my specialty area is personality disorders. And people look up personality disorders, but they only look up the initial criteria, which is called criteria A but they don't look up the B, C, D, or E. Those are additional criteria that have to be present in order to qualify for the disorder and how they manifest and the degree to which they manifest. And what happens is, is when you look up a few things, then your anxiety, remember that little secret spy, it waits. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and it wants you to go to Dr. Google. It does, it sits there. Mm -hmm. Just go to Dr. Google, just do it. And you go there and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, it's this, 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 and all that anxiety. And it's like, yeah. And that anxiety just floods you. Not going outside, not getting enough fresh air, not getting enough of what you need to feel better. And that's really important. Going outside, hopefully, if you have a dog, that's great, or going for walks. You don't have to be outside all day, go outside for a little bit but go outside. Don't stay in your house. And I know that's hard for some people because they are afraid to go outside. Sometimes they're genuinely concerned at what's going on in the world and things like that. Be careful. You don't want to focus too much on the news because then you're going to fall into what's called an availability heuristic, which means that when you read a lot of horrible things, you tend to think everything is horrible. Everything is not horrible. I know it seems that way because the news knows that you attend longer and your little spy in your brain, that family in the head, that patient spy knows that when you're consuming negative information, you're going to hibernate inside. Not healthy. Go outside. Even start at two minutes. Just go to the end of your driveway. Two minutes. Can't do two minutes. Do one minute. Can't do one minute. Do 30 seconds. But every day go out and do it a little more and a little more. Being outside helps. It's a sense of exposure, but also a sense of freedom as well. Because when we're inside, and if we're afraid to go outside, anxiety takes advantage of that. And lastly, too much sugar. Now, I'm guilty of this. I love chocolate. I love donuts. I love M&Ms. I eat a lot of, of sugar. I do. I know that I do. I try to manage it as best I can. And the way I typically do it is that I try not to eat a lot of, of sugar each day right? I try to manage that sugar intake. We have to manage it. But a lot of sugar, what happens is you get up and then you're going to crash. And that's when your anxiety gets a hold of you. That's when that family in the head gets a hold of you. 
Use these 10 things to your advantage to control your anxiety and eat healthy. Take care of yourself. Easy to say, hard to do. Man, I know, I know. But do one or two of these things and see if that helps you and leave comments. I want to know if it's helpful. And other people want to know. I love that people read the comments and I think that's awesome. And please like, share, and subscribe and comment. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.